My name is Paul Shelley, and welcome to The Astro Historian, a channel dedicated to exploring and explaining the lore of sci-fi and space universes and discussing their impact. Today we'll be talking about the secret private think tank that is responsible for most of the cutting-edge military science of the UEE in Star Citizen, the University of Per Se Analytical Research and Quantification, also known as UPARC. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for your continued support. We have over 16,000 subscribers and rising, so if this is the second time you've watched one of my videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when these are released. We also have some new merch of Old Man Al Hurston from our Lore Citizen podcast, available for a limited time. Check the link in the description below. With that all being said, let's learn about the cutting-edge science done at UPARC. The origins of UPARC stretch back to the discovery and founding of the Redder system. Two students from the Martian Institute of Science and Technology discovered the second jump point in human history by accident while doing field work in the newly discovered Croshaw system in 2287. They reported this find to the president of their college, Adrian Zemlock, who distrusted how the nations of Earth had approached the colonization of the Croshaw system. So as part of a deal between the president of MIST and the World Summit, Zemlock would give them the coordinates of the jump point in exchange for a guarantee that a quarter of the land of the new system would be set aside for educational purposes. Redder 2, also known as Per Se, was very different from its sister planets of Mentor and Reese, as from the beginning it was set aside for think tanks and research labs, compared to its siblings' more traditional universities. This is likely to do with its proximity to Redder 1, which was rich in valuable resources used to help terraform the entire system. While it isn't explicit, I do believe that, since its founding, UPARC has been fundamentally changing technology for humanity. With easy access to just about any material they needed, they were in a perfect location to begin experimenting on navigational computers, systems that were needed to make jump travel easier and safer, and very important to the future of the system. We know that the first nav-assisted jump drives were released shortly after the first groups of colonists and students arrived in the system to set up the universities, and given the proclivity of modern UPARC, I believe they were the ones to make this breakthrough. If this is true, it is likely that this incredibly important development pushed UPARC ahead of its fledgling sibling universities in the system as a place where groundbreaking technologies were made. At the very least, it likely drew the attention of the World Summit as it transitioned into the United Nations of Earth. Since then, we know that much of what has been developed in the university remains classified, as the UNE, then the UPE, and now the UEE have all paid for studies and projects led by UPARC. For example, it's rumored that the favorite deployment method of the UEE Marines, the Nail Drop Pod, was created by UPARC, who developed it by reverse engineering Van Duel boarding pods. What projects that were eventually declassified have had a massive impact on human space exploration? For instance, the Solar Energy Coil, which was designed initially as an attempt to weaponize solar electromagnetic energy during the First Devaran War by UPARC. Even though the project failed, the researchers realized it would work perfectly to harness the free energy of the violent pulsar of the Banshee system. These coils are still used today to keep the vast network of underground mining operations, settlements, and cities with enough power to thrive in the hostile system. Another example of a declassified project making a major impact on day-to-day -day life in the UEE is the energy-efficient quantum engine. It is likely that the vaunted Bengal Carrier's engines, which are said to not need refueling for an average of 20 years, are partially the result of this project, though the technology has been utilized in all quantum core engines since its declassification. These should give you an idea of just how much important work comes out of UPARC. In fact, much of the legacy of UPARC isn't even officially from UPARC, but from dropouts and former students many of whom have gone on to develop cutting-edge technology for the UEE or help influence the verse in fundamental ways. To give you an example, Magda Hurston, the CEO of Hurston Dynamics who purchased Stanton One, was an intern at UPARC for a year. The founder of Basilisk Arms, Simone Visconti, dropped out of UPARC to pursue a career in engineering. Basilisk would go on to be the premier armor manufacturer for ships and personal protection for the UE military and the preferred choice of many private contractors today. 
Caldera was founded in U Park when two engineering graduate students were given government grant and a lab at the university. While the research was promising, their grant ran out, so they moved their work to nearby Mentor to continue working. This would eventually lead to the breakthrough of the Novikov and Pembroke suits, which are indispensable to modern exploration, making previously unreachable locations due to extreme temperatures and pressures easily traversable. The trio of students who would found Rayari had been working on a grant to make highly adaptable crops available to grow in any soil and in any condition at U Park when Linton Mezer pulled their funds. After the fall of the Mezers, the trio returned to the project and were successful at bringing the native flora of Garen II literally back from extinction, and even developed the plant life that has been able to survive the frigid temperatures of Microtech. Burl Hitchens was a brilliant engineer and researcher whose work with lasers was revolutionary. However, he had a bad habit of bucking authority. So after his first year at U Park, he was expelled and forced to complete his studies on his own, founding Maxox shortly afterwards. Eventually, he would find himself back at U Park working for the Mezers on Project Vespa, a eventually failed attempt to turn terraforming lasers into doomsday weapons. His penchant for rebellion eventually got him kicked off the team as he simply delayed and stalled the project, believing it was immoral. This delay may have led to the eventual downfall of the project, whose abandoned terraforming platforms would eventually be used to construct the invaluable Ark Station. And his company, Maxox, still develops the premier neutron weapons of the UEE to this day. Even the infamous Dr. Marcus Fiel was a researcher at U Park before being hired to help terraform Maya in the Lear system. He not only achieved his ambitious goals of turning the planet into a paradise, but managed to form a cult and kick out the corporation that hired him to do it. Of all of these advancements from people who left the university, it's easy to imagine the sheer volume of still classified, cutting-edge technology that has been developed for the UEE at U Park that might one day revolutionize the verse. Until then, we can only speculate on what goes on behind the walls of the UEE's private think tank. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank those Patreons on screen now for helping me make this all possible. If you want to join them, the link is in the description. For as little as $5 a month, you get early access to videos, including a timed exclusive covering the entire history of the Star Citizen universe, whose first episode was recently released to the public. Check it out now to see what $5 a month will get you. For now, let me know what you think about U Park in the comments below. And as always, remember, ex historia ad astra.